What up friends, you can call me that too. And today we're going to be reviewing Rosalia's newest album, Motomami. This is the third album overall by Spanish Latin pop singer-songwriter Rosalia. Admittedly, this is the first album I heard from her actually. I went back afterwards to listen to the rest of her discography, but I have to say this was a pretty fun introduction to her. Rosalia has experimented with quite a few aspects of the Latin pop scene, but in my eyes what makes her different from the rest of her contemporaries is the introduction of art pop into her sounds that really makes her stand out from the crowd. Latin pop can feel a bit stagnant from time to time, and even though Motomami isn't as emotionally charged as El Mal Querer was, I do think it does an interesting job at showcasing a different side of Rosalia. Saoko provides a very lively start to the project, sampling a 2004 reggaeton hit by the same name, Saoko, although spelled with a different letter. The beat is energized and the bass is a constant force, and Rosalia's vocals are very in-your-face, but in a very fun way. The addition of the little piano intermissions also give the track a pretty unique vibe, just adding to the build-up that much more. It's very much a bragging anthem, but with this beat, it totally works. Candy is a bit more of a serious track with a delicate swirling synth and softer vocals. They have a trance-like effect to capture this broken love that Rosalia is talking about, especially as this person has now gone from her life. It has a sort of empowering angle to it, with her essentially moving on, however you can still tell that she's slightly troubled by the relationship. This fits the overall darker beat that this song has, kind of pulling her back down to earth from the previous song. Unfortunately, I'm not really feeling La Fama as much, as it's kind of just a generic version of the Latin pop sounds that she's already known for. There's not much variation in each of the track's segments, making it feel kind of stagnant pretty early on in the song's runtime. The Weeknd was a fine addition, if nothing special, but the instrumental is the real boring thing here. All it is is a repetitive beat that doesn't really do anything interesting. The lyrics talking about an obsession with fame, comparing it to an obsessive lover, was a pretty interesting lyrical topic, however nothing else about the track really backs these ideas up. Muradias is a fun little interlude track of sorts, almost reminding me of like a modern Bjork song or something. The beat is sparse but intriguing, the vocal performances are good, and I'm also really digging these sort of subtle mariachi-like background vocals here. They add a very natural texture to what is otherwise a fairly rigid song, and the contrast as the song progresses was also pretty interesting. It's just a nice little celebration tune with Rosalia kind of looking back at her accomplishments in life. Chicken Teriyaki is another fun track, kind of feeling what La Fama was going for, but more successful. The vocals are way more engaging, demanding your attention with a catchy rhythm and flows. I can actually hear some like M.I.A. influences on this one, with a beat that is sparse, but also hits pretty hard. The confident cadence also fits what is essentially another flex anthem, as she's kind of living the New York high life here. The next track is Hentai. Who would have thought we could make a sort of endearing ballad about that, right? It's basically what it says on the tin. It's an embrace of sexuality, feeling very delicate before a machine gun-like beat just hammers it into you at the end. <laughs> the song is fairly simple, however I think it does work pretty well with the subject matter. I'd compare it to how many Billie Eilish songs sort of use simplicity to express vulnerability and how there are one or two edgy moments and edgy elements to the tracks that kind of show you how they're unapologetically being themselves. The latter half of the record is a bit less interesting than the first half, but it's still not bad. G3 N15 largely kind of just feels like a repeat of hentai. I think Rosalia's vocals are powerful and the vivid lyrics detailing a former lover and all of their interests and traits was pretty well done, however the instrumental just doesn't have much of an identity. The addition of the organ backs up her vocals pretty well, however nothing else about the track really backs up that energy. However, I will say that I do like the endearing ending monologue of this track. Diablo is another one of the weirder ones on the record. I do like the main instrumental, feeling a bit muted in the piano and beats, however the vocals sound kinda off. The track is imbued with a subtle charge of energy, however the vocal effect on the chorus is really awkward, and the more natural tone on the verses is pretty sparse. I don't know how I feel about it, it's pretty repetitive, but I also kind of appreciate the chill vibes that it has. If the overdone vocal effects weren't there, I'd like this one a lot actually, but as it stands, it's alright. Delirio de Grandeza is by far my favorite song on the record. The big emphasis on the horns is very quirky and different from the album, almost feeling very traditional in its instrumentation. Rosalia's vocals are textured and extravagant, and the relatively simple yet lively background instrumentation flows elegantly behind her. It feels very raw too, like you're just chilling at a local restaurant listening to the band play or something. 
The vibes are just very homely, and the Soldier Boy sample that she used as the bridge fits surprisingly well. It's a very different track, but it's a very welcome one. Cute is a sort of dark banger, also feeling very different for the record. The beat is rapid and oppressive, maybe suggesting how Rosalia is trying to sort of destroy the cute stereotype for women. The bridge is very dramatic and lavish before going right back into that confident second verse. There's an interesting combination of parts to this song that make Rosalia's efforts to break the mold pretty successful. Kumu Unji is another ballad that feels a bit standard in the grand scheme of the project. However, unlike G3 and 15, I feel like the vocals here carry enough weight to balance out the more basic instrumentation. The addition of the strings also help the song stand out a bit, and the lyrics are vivid in a sort of mob boss who kills for her love type of way. It still feels a bit redundant having this many ballads on an album with otherwise pretty upbeat pacing, however it's a pretty good track on its own. La Combi Versace is another darker sounding song on the record, but it's a pretty welcome one. It strangely feels like an ending track despite being the penultimate song on the record. The simple yet haunting synths and the energy that Rosalia and Takisha bring are a pretty interesting contrast I have to say. The interactions that the two have together also tend to feel very natural and lively. I actually think this sound will be a pretty interesting direction for Rosalia to take her next record, to be honest, like a sort of dark side of Latin pop or something. It ends a bit abruptly, but I really do like the sinister yet playful vibe here. Sakura ends the album on a pretty powerful note, a live performance that's pretty much all a cappella. Her vocals fill the stands with operatic power, lamenting the death of natural beauty over these chords. It's almost bittersweet, as Rosalia acknowledges that her looks and stardom won't last forever, however, it's kinda better that way. That outro especially is pretty chilling. Rosalia's newest record overall showcases her fun side, having more lively instrumentation overall compared to her previous releases. It's nice to see her take on the more upbeat aspects of Latin pop while also still imbuing it with her art pop influences. However, because of this combination, we also get a jarring mishmash of sounds on this project, from the upbeat and occasionally dark bangers to Billie Eilish-inspired ballads. The pacing of the record just seems a bit off, like it doesn't know which sound to fully commit to. The songs tend to be pretty good in a vacuum, even if some aspects can sound like retreaded ground, but combining them all together just feels a bit messy. The track lengths can also vary wildly, with some songs lasting like two to two and a half minutes when they have a good beat, while others last for like three and a half to four minutes with a more basic beat. There were also some intermissions on this album that, while okay, don't really add to the overall experience. Overall, it's an album with good, if not fully fleshed out tracks in isolation that don't come together all that seamlessly. I am feeling a decent seven on Rosalia's newest album. Of course, you do have to talk about album covers on this show, and I really like this album cover, actually. I think it definitely does showcase her fun side. It definitely feels a bit more lighthearted compared to the album covers of her previous releases. I do like the simplicity of it as well. It's a pretty sensual pose, a very interesting imagery, good color combination. I'm not sure how much I feel the red sort of graffiti-like text on her. I might have preferred it if it was a bit more off to the side in the white space, kind of like a Michael Jackson bad or something. But overall, I really do like the concept, and I think it's a pretty good album cover. But that is all I have to say about this new album from Rosalia. What did you guys think? Do you think this is a really cool and interesting new side to her, or is it a bit less interesting compared to her previous work? Let me know, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell if you too are someone on a motorcycle. What? And until the next one, farewell.